Hi there, thanks for joining me. My name is Ron, and I've been putting out oboe videos every week for the last month. But today will be something a little bit different. Today I'll be Flute Ron. I'm recovering from an appendectomy, and I'm just about ready to start playing oboe very soon. But I figured now was a good a time as any to get my oboe in the shop and while my oboe is getting some TLC, I am discovering my first woodwind love once again, the flute, uh, which I played in band in grade 7 and grade 8. Before I go any further, I would like to encourage you to uh, please like this video and subscribe to my channel where I put out oboe content. I'm really looking forward to playing the oboe again starting next week. So when I joined band in grade 7, I really wanted to play the bass guitar or the drums, um, but my dad played the flute back when he was a kid and so he really wanted me to play an instrument that could fit in my backpack. This is the same Yamaha 221 um, that I got when I was in grade 7 and it's been mostly sitting around my house. Uh, my parents' house. It's been really fun trying to play the flute again, actually. I don't think I'm that much worse than I was when I stopped playing the flute 15 years ago, but obviously since going to music school and becoming a professional musician, my standards for flute playing have risen quite a bit. I really wanted to try playing the intermezzo from Carmen by Bizet, it's really one of my favorite solos, and I'm so jealous that the flutes get to play it, and I can't really play it on the oboe because it goes way too high. Um, I figured that it's like a little bit slower, so it would be like a little bit more achievable for me, but it has that high B-flat in it, and I've never played a high B-flat on the flute before. I just looked up the fingering yesterday. Yeah, so I got the high B flat, it's not the most pretty note for me right now, but we'll see how it goes. Um, here's what it sounds like with just a little bit of work. As you can see, it is not that great. <laughs> I definitely never knew that this solo went so high because I really feel like flute players make that high B flat sound so easy. Like Emmanuel Paud, like let's listen to that right now. So I've decided to call in a friend and get a little mini lesson. Um, I'm going to call my friend Terry Lim, um, who's a flute player and teacher in Toronto. I've known him for over 12 years. Um, he used to be in Vancouver, where we both did our undergrad at University of British Columbia, and then he was in New York when I was in New York, and um, we're both in Toronto right now. So I'm trying to play the intermezzo from Carmen, and this piece is a little bit of a disaster, and I was just going <laughs> to help me with it. It's a, it's a difficult piece, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like, I, I think I underestimated this one when I was younger. Um, this was in university, and I, you know, I just prepared and played it, and then I would just, my, one of my teachers was like, mm -mm, this is not how it's done. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> Well, I'm pretty sure you're going to tell me that today. <laughs> no, that would be fun. All right, let's hear it. Let's go for it. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, that was so 
Joker. Eric Joker. Okay. What do you um, what what do you find it difficult though when you're playing uh something like this? Oh, I think the hardest thing for me is like breath control. Obviously, as an oboist, I use way less air than on flute. On flute, you know, we waste half of the air; it doesn't even go inside the instrument. And I think the other thing that's really hard for me is like because of the breath control, like actually finding ways to make more of a shape in the phrase. Hmm. Okay. Okay. No, that makes sense. Uh, generally speaking, I, I remember, you know, like when I prepare for first time, I say, oh, it's a solo. I'm just going to play, you know, loud and, and exciting. And then I was like, I was told, do you not see the dynamic marking that's written on the music? It's just pianissimo, <laughs> super piano, all the way kind of thing. It's generally softer. I think that, that will help you in terms of um, uh, any phrasings or, or like breathing control, I think that that probably helps you. But probably the difficulty will be actually playing a little softer. Yeah, in the how do you play soft and high soft high play notes kind of thing. high register? <laughs> Can you just play the first two bars? Yeah. So it just goes kind of down the octave. Yeah. No, so, so the difficulty here is sometimes you are blowing quite down kind of thing. Okay. And direction of air is a little up kind of thing. So when you're putting it down, it covers a lot and it has a difficult, basically you're saving uh, some of these notes by blowing a little more air right now kind of yeah. thing. But try to see if you can actually stay still rather than a bit down too okay. much kind of thing. Yeah, I'll give that a try. Yeah, that's a little better. It's not it's like a, what it is that when you play the first time, it's cracking just a little bit here, there yeah. kind of thing because you're trying to blow up, but then you're blowing down. So that doesn't quite work. And sometimes, and basically you're using really good air. So you're saving some of these notes because of that. But if it's for other people who don't use that much air, they will likely to crack all over those high notes quite often yeah. kind of thing. So that's probably one thing that you want to make sure that you're not doing too much. And basically, I mean, it's a finding balance, right? So you want to reach high notes. And so how are you reaching high notes? Are you blowing more air? Are you directing with your uh, direction or are you fixing the direction of air with your lips kind of thing? And all that has to sort of come together. Sometimes I compromise and find the right balance. So that one was a little bit better kind of thing. Try one more time, and this time just keep going. So some of it is a little bit better. Really watch out, even like when I'm looking at it on the screen kind of thing, it kind of tends to, when you're running out of air, well, when you play oboe, when you're running out of air, what do you do? Oh, then just never, I just circular breathe. I just take <laughs> Basically, um, I mean, I do well, as a when you take more, when you're running out of air, you kind of collapse a bit. Yeah, it does a little bit. Even right now, it tends to go a little forward. It's not too much, but it's to the point that it's kind of going a little forward. You still want to stay a little still kind of thing all the way if it's possible. Yeah. And that's usually what happens for a lot of people. And when they're trying to play some of these high notes, they tend to like collapse a little bit and that usually creates more issues and forces. So just try one more time and you probably don't know the notes in the beginning kind of thing. See if you can just really stabilize the whole posture a little bit. Yeah. I mean, aside all the notes issue, and it's really, it was good. The beginning, like first line was so good. It was very, very clean all the way kind of thing. That's, yeah. like, I think that's usually um, 
a lot of uh, uh, students have tend to have problem. It just tend to be a little down and and most I mean like you know when you're quite good at it, you can kind of fix it kind of thing. But when you're a student, it's hard to oh do all that kind of thing at the same time playing all the notes and and everything. So that's a bit right. difficult. But but that one was good. Uh, go through a bit difficult stuff stuff that goes up high notes. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty yeah, good. I think uh, really like trying to stabilize and not move too much, I think actually helped a lot surprisingly. <laughs> I've definitely told it to my oboe students, but it's hard to apply it to oneself, I think. I mean, like we do all the time. And then like, you know, like, I'm, I sometimes video record myself and then like, oh God, like I'm cracking all over. It sounds okay in concert, but then when I start recording, it's like, Oh my God, that sounds pretty bad, kind of thing. Okay. So, um, no, but that's the usually main thing. And then after that, I think for you, it's breathing, uh, breathing quicker, kind of thing. I mean, you're breathing really well, right? But for what I had to like when I was younger, I had to breathe like in tempo, as in like breathing in four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second, half second, and still breathing fast, but really deep, quick enough kind of thing. Right now, you are very comfortable with the, like that kind of breathing, yeah, which is okay. a good kind of thing, but it needs to be almost like, like a little, like a half second faster than that, but still deep, all mm -hmm. kind of thing. So that probably helps you and the other thing is, yeah, with the, this particular piece, tempo-wise, it can be all over because it says the uh, andantino and allegro-ish kind of thing. So you know, quasi allegretto. Quasi allegretto. So I've heard like so many different versions of it. Like I've heard super slow one, and then like uh, push the tempo a little bit. I had heard like a faster version kind of thing. Yours is a more faster side. Yeah. But it's not bad. It's not bad until maybe like uh, do that until you feel really comfortable with the breathing. And when that feels a little comfortable, you can maybe slow it down ever so slowly so that yeah, yeah you can control it a bit better all the way, I think. It's really good. I, I didn't know that you can play at that level kind of thing because oh. that's, that's well, like pretty good. <laughs> I mean, no, like you can play all the high notes and everything. That's pretty I never Impressive. played high B flat before yesterday. I looked it up. I looked at the <laughs> finger. <laughs> well, I think like it comes out so well for you. Like it's super easy almost for you kind of thing. All those high notes. For some people, it takes like for long, a lot longer kind of thing. So yeah. I thought I, I thought it was more surprising, more like a, oh. Oh, he can play all those high notes like shit. <laughs> yeah, it's. I tr it's like so much easier to play high notes on the flute than it is on the oboe, I think. Oh, yeah. Because if we really work hard for those high notes, like it does not. So much. Work. Yeah, like so much. Because I tried to play oboe once and nothing came out for a long time. And I was like, it wasn't even high notes. It was just regular, like low notes. And I, I was blowing down and everything. And I, Ah, oh, the read is bad. Get the <laughs> it's out of my way. It's not happening. It's always the read's fault. <laughs> I'm just going to blame it, read, because uh, otherwise that would be great. <laughs> anyway, hopefully that was helpful. Yeah, thank you so much, Terry. Thanks for the little lesson. <laughs> really appreciate it. I loved having that lesson with Terry. It was so sweet and really cool to learn some new concepts about flute playing, which were uh, pretty new to me. You should definitely follow Terry. He was so sweet to do this. And um, his email is terrylimmusic at gmail.com. He's currently revamping his website, but you can follow him on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And those links will be in the description below. All right, here is the final product.
So obviously I'm not going to meet Emmanuel Pode after two or three days of playing the flute, but um, I really learned a lot and this was like a fun little experiment for me. Well, I'm really looking forward to getting back into oboe playing, especially now. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me and I hope this was really entertaining for you. Um, please let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. Um, I have a few ideas planned, uh, but definitely down the road. I really uh, take into account your suggestions. So please uh, like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to me here on YouTube. Additionally, please follow me on Instagram at oboron, where I post daily tips, tricks, and practice videos. And Monday Meme Day. Have a good day.